glycans are a major um, player in sort of the immune system, right? And the immune system sort of targeting towards cancer. So can you sort of speak to the role of those sugar molecules in cancer development and some of your work in this space? Right. And so uh, I also, um, I would be remiss to mention that the Nobel Prize in uh, Chemistry this year was awarded to this professor um, called Professor Carolyn Bertozzi. And she, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, glycoscience was um, not as popular as it was now. And a lot of it has to do with what Professor Carolyn Bertozzi has done for the field, which is to provide us tools to understand um, what these different glycosylation patterns might look like on cells, but also to create avenues on how we can manipulate them. Okay, so go back to the disease relevance and I'll, I'll describe her work as well. So um, there was previous data describing that healthy cells versus cancer cells exhibit different glycosylation profiles. Again, we start from correlation. And then um, now we can basically, uh, they actually found um, other people have found that these extra glycans on cancer cells help them evade immune responses. So it tells the body to uh, shut up. Um, we're, uh, we're like your own cells, don't touch us, and allows the cancer cells to proliferate. And what she's done um, recently is to create antibody conjugates with enzymes that cleave off that extra sugars. And so what you can do is an antibody that targets your cancer cell specifically and then this sialidase enzyme can clip off these extra sugars. And now not only do you have a drug that targets the cancer cell, but it also removes the signal that tells the immune system to shut up. So it's like a double-edged sword. You target your cancer cell, but also expose them towards the immune system. And so it, it's going, this is going to be a new way of uh, much more selective uh, therapeutic avenues to treat cancer. So gener generally, my work is involved with profiling, um, developing techniques to profile glycosylation on different cancer cells, understanding the causes of why this extra glycosylation exists. What is it doing to help or you know help help cells differentiate, help cells evade um, the immunity, and then being able to create pathways to target that pathway as well. How do these glycans change then when uh, a cancer metastasizes and then sort of infiltrates other other organs? That that's also really interesting. So if you think of yourself as a cell and you have this outer protective layer of sugars on them, that sugar layer could either help you as a cell stay where you're at, like a solid tumor, um, or you can imagine changing your outside coat and allow you to lift yourself up and then move to a different spot, so just like metastasis. And so we've found that changes in um, the glycocalyx composition um, is responsible for or correlated to um, the ability of cancer cells to either stay put as a solid tumor and grow where they are and even maybe um, uh, supercharge their growth but also allows them to metastasize towards different areas. That's also one area where people are actively exploring, maybe um, you know, not allowing the cancer cell to metastasize towards different areas is enough of a therapeutic strategy, again, by changing the glycosylation. Is it true that uh, blood type is from these types of sugars on our cells? Yeah, and so red blood cells, your red blood cells, well, depending on your blood type, um, uh, all of these red blood cells, like I said, are coated with these glycan molecules. And the fact that you're a uh, blood type A or AB or O um, all has to do, and they're all classified by the type of sugar molecules or glycan molecules that are on your red blood cell. And that has important implications for um, blood transfusion, for example. And in fact, one of the sort of newer engineering ways on how we can make use of that information um, is to create a universal blood type um, where we can engineer all red blood cells to have the same kind of um, uh, or a non-immunogenic kind of uh, glycocalyx so that everybody can use them and we wouldn't have to potentially go through all of this um, typing that we do now um, to make sure that uh, there are no adverse immune reactions. Oh, wow. And I guess that's one of the main issues with um, organ transplants too, right? It is, exactly. Yep. Wow. Oh, that would be so cool. So do we know how many types of these different glycans there are in the body? <laughs> wow. 
Um, that, that seems like a f- easy question, but it's actually quite difficult. Oh. So because there are um, on a theoretical level, um, there's about 40 kinds of um, monosaccharide precursors building blocks. But in general, majority of the glycans in the cell are made up of nine particular monosaccharides, but they all interconvert towards each other. There are these enzymes in the cell that convert one monosaccharide to another, and it essentially um, uh, greatly amplifies the amount of building blocks that are present. And so if I were to open up a cell at any given point in time and say, um, how many monosaccharides are in there? Um, majority of them are going to be the nine that I mentioned, but there's going to be a lot of other, what we call rare, but you know they're quite prevalent as well. So um, it's not only the building blocks that um, cause the diversity, but the way they're linked towards each other as well. So each monosaccharide has at least um, four to six sites of modification and how you link one versus the other can have important impl- implications as well. So like a, a really popular example is the influenza virus that causes the flu and humans in their lungs have one particular kind of linkage in their sugar glycan coating, whereas pigs have another. And so if an influenza virus has a protein that likes to bind one, pi- one kind of particular linkage, then it can only affect a human or a pig. But if you now have a mutation um, uh, in the influenza, which it actually does happen, um, that it allows them to jump from the pig being able to infect pigs only towards that versus humans. So we pay a lot of attention to the chemistry of these sugars as well.